Good morning to all of you and thank you very much for your kind wonderful welcome. I'm just so blessed to join you here in worship. Uh, I'd like to join Myanmar people in worship. Because they all like to sing. Not only they all like to sing, they can all sing very well. Some people like to sing but cannot sing well. But all Myanmar people can sing very well. Especially Christians. Amen. 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 You know why Christians can sing very well? It is all because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wherever the gospel goes around the world, it makes great singers. And so for example in the Philippines, they produce one of the best singers in the whole world. And it's all because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not in the gospel produce great singers. It also produces great artists. People can draw very well. And that's why, friends, the power of the gospel. It produces great singers and great artists. Say to your neighbor, you also got hope. That is, that is hope for all of us. Amen. 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 And so this morning, right, I want to bring a word of God to all of you. I've been praying very, very much for this wonderful nation of Myanmar. For many years now I've been praying for this powerful, wonderful nation. But somehow or other, God didn't allow me to come here. And many people tell me how much you have missed by not coming to Myanmar. But I say never mind, never too late. Amen. 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 The more Amen you say, my preaching becomes better and better. Amen. Thank you for your encouragement. That, that's why I like to preach in a church that has a lot of Amens. Because, amen. Because even if you're, if even, okay, because even if an average preacher, you become a very good preacher. Amen. And if a good preacher become a great preacher. Amen. Thank you so much indeed. But I believe, friends, God has brought me here for such a time as this. Because I believe this is a new dawn and a new day for Myanmar. God, God is doing amazing things in these days in Myanmar. God has allowed me to come together with my wife okay, during this time when you just had a general elections. And I believe your position, friends, by God in the coming days in a greater powerful manner to achieve mighty things for God. These, these are exciting days and exciting times in Myanmar. I, I feel like I also want to move to Myanmar here. Amen. Will you, ex, will you accept me? Amen. Thank you so much for your great, wonderful encouragement. And so I'm going to read from a passage here from Isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 and 19. Here, here the Bible says, 
Those, those who can read in English, join me to read in English aloud. Is that okay? Because I know quite a number of you can read English well. Maybe slightly better than me. So let's read aloud together. Together, let's go. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now, now it springs up. up. Do, Do you not, not perceive it? it? I'm, I'm making, making a way in the desert, desert and streams in the wasteland. ဆက်ရှစ်စကိုကျွန်မနေတို့ကဖတ်ကြရအောင်မြန်မာကြမ်းစာနဲ့ဖြစ်ဖူးတော့အမှုတို့ကိုမအောင်မေးကြားနဲ
then finally farmer said my third wish oh be done le thamba nga enna usono na usudam chakaro i want you to make my buffalo run nga ye no di jwe go pye se jene people push the buffalo ane luri ga chu sa bi ton ja le no ao people drag the buffalo ane di jwe go tkha le swe ja the buffalo did not move at all na me lo ma me jwe bu tu ga the buffalo strong ba lo le tu ga tek go tan ma le twa cha ane the passes say can i try again ane de yo se be re chano jo sa ji lo ya ma la and the farmer say show you me ane tu ane be re ho bi jo sa ji ba and the passes went to the ear of the buffalo de yo se ga to bi re jwe na ma pyo lai de and whispered something ear of the buffalo tu ye na le go to to le pyo lai de the buffalo booted off ra kha le jwe ra kha le pye ya tan ni ya be everybody was shocked and surprised ano wa ta kha le a o bi le ni ja it's unbelievable this pastor da lo wa me yo nai si ya be di te o si ya and so finally before the farmer presented the buffalo to the pastor na ne na so ma ro no le da ma ya tu ye jwe go te yo si ya go pe lai ba the farmer want to know from a pastor what did you do to my buffalo that can fulfill my three wishes da ne le da ma ya me le te yo si ya go nga ye jwe go blo lo lai da le nga ye su tam cha di a lo ne bi kai ni ya me ya the pastor said are you sure you want to know da ne te yo si ya be me ke ti chen lo la the farmer said of course before i present you just nai with wonderful buffalo that is my heart ache no nga te ngo no di jwe ma be ke nga ti chen na bo well say the said the pastor to the farmer da ne te yo si ya nga ni bi lo no le da ma yo pyo pya le Well firstly I told your buffalo how hard I work as a pastor. And it you know but tama u song tin o sia tin o ni ne blood da a lot jo sa ya le so tin ye jwe ko pyo lai de. I suppose your your buffalo took pity upon me about how hard I work as a pastor. Then it jwe a you know bo to to tana do a de tin ma le. And your buffalo crying cry. A ji je ngo lo la be tu ga. That's exactly I told your buffalo. Then it do dia ni ne jno jno ji tin ye jwe ko pyo lai de. How much salary I get every month from as a pastor? You know, they also are telling me that lack of love, yeah, ladies, will be a big lie there, huh? I suppose the buffalo couldn't believe it. How did they do it? You know, my own mother made. How can you work so hard and get so little salary? Then the love chose to be part of the love we lack of, and they are like. And so the buffalo laugh and laugh like crazy. Ah, did you hear the kind of zero of it, JJ? Because he, even the buffalo did not believe it. Ah, no, it's a joke. I love my own name. Fine, I said to your buffalo. Now, so much, you know, they. Now you want to be a pastor? Then you can't tell us you're just a little me like that. Now, how many of you you want to be pastors? Tell us you're just a little bit of a little bit of a My goodness. I'm late. Uh, Pastor Jale, so if you people want to be pastors here. Yeah. Se ma Jale, think no lut but du ga ma tin yo se ma phit chin daw bu de. You are all in trouble. Tin no phit da na ba we. I want to be a pastor. Tin no tin yo se phit chin ne. I suppose Pastor Trent Tang also wants to be a pastor. Se tin no le tin yo se phit chin ne. It is a great privilege to be a pastor. Tin yo se phit la thu khwin ye phit de. Because I can't blame the buffalo not want to be a pastor because of so is a buffalo. Ba no jwe ga tin yo se ma phit chin na tin no phit din lo myao le ba lo le tu a jwe ho. But really I take it a great privilege to be a pastor. You know how they also are here to to come you read ba. Because I get to travel around the world. You know come out cool long to I are. And I get to meet some of the nicest people in the whole world. Come out cool long ma kaung song no dui ne dui khwin ya khe de. Say to your neighbor you're one of them. They are bena lu pyo lai ba o they are ari thai ga tiao be. Really friends can I say you are really some of the nicest people on earth that I get to meet. The gay people are amazing they they hang about my account so no they at your baby. And I believe friends God has asked me to come during this time and season here in Myanmar. Ye ma nai ngan go phya khin ga chno go di lo chain di lo kha myo ma pu saung be de. To tell you that it is a new dawn and a new day for Myanmar. Di chain ye ma nai ngan twa ya de at the chain ka la at the phit ba de. God has not forgotten Myanmar. Phyat khem Myanmar nai ngan ko ma mei phit lai phu. You have gone through some challenges and some difficulties over the years. Myanmar nai ngan ha nit pao mya swa ma sin khom mu de khak khe mu de ne phit tan khe ya ba de. But I believe friends God is turning Myanmar around. Ta mei Myanmar nai ngan ko phyat khe ga pyaung lai de lou nei bi. There is great hope and great future for Myanmar. Myanmar nai ngan twa myo lin jin ne ne yet de de shi ne de. Can I hear amen for that? Amen cha cha thu ba. Amen. Amen. Very very important indeed is it? And therefore friends you know as God is position Myanmar to have a great future and a great day ahead you and I must know what is God's call to the church in Myanmar Phyat khin ga akhu lo chain myo ma Myanmar nai ngan ko kaung mo ne anaka ko kho twa de chain ma chno to a lo ti bo lo de Phyat khin Myanmar nai ngan ko blo lo phu Myanmar nai ngan atin no de ko blo lo phu kho tha de le What has God called the church in Myanmar to be 
There are three calls that God is making to the church in Myanmar. The first call is to forget the past. And that's how in verse 18 of Isaiah 43 it says like this. It says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. I believe God is calling you to forget to put away the things of the past. Now to forget is not not to remember. Of course, we must remember all the good things that God has done for us. Can you good amen for that? Amen. God has done many wonderful things. Amen. Amen. We must not forget. What, what does God say to us when He says, forget the former things? What I believe God is saying to us is not to dwell on the past. Not to allow the past to hold us back. We may have, for example, experienced blessings and wonderful success in the past. I've seen the amazing ministry that your church here is doing. You have not only really planted 45 churches here around Myanmar, but also about five churches around the world. This is a great church. Amen. 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 You don't sound very excited. This is a great church. This is a great church. Amen. That's better. And that's, and that's why sometimes I like to preach in, for example, African American churches in America. How many of you have been visited? You have visited African American churches in United States. Can I see your hands? No, American African Oldest African Americans or Black Americans? No, American African American African See, if you preach in their church, many people say amen and amen to your preaching. Amen. And if you make a very good point, they will, they will say to you, preach preacher. They will say, hallelujah, pastor. And you make another good point. Some of them will stand up and make a dance around. The seat. Some of them will dance up and down the seat like that. It is a great encouragement to your preaching. So that if you're if so that if you're a poor preacher, you become a very good preacher because of that kind of encouragement. Amen. But if you are a poor, really poor preacher. Your preaching is flat. You know what some what will some of them say? No, some of them will say to the preacher oh Jesus Jesus help him help the preacher another one another one will say oh Jesus have mercy have mercy upon the preacher and then the person will stand up and begin to pray for the preacher amen 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 I'm sure you will not treat me like this. Amen. Amen. I know you are wonderful people. But you see friends, God is telling us not to dwell on our blessings and our success of the past. God has blessed you all amazingly. 
We must never forget about that. We must remember it. But we must not dwell on it. We must not allow the past to prevent us from moving forward. So you all can testify of God's grace at work in your lives. And it is great church across Myanmar and around the world. And I rejoice and celebrate with you all about God's blessings upon you all. But secondly, God is telling us also don't dwell on your disappointments and your failures. Any one of us, we've experienced disappointment or failures in the past. Can, can I see your hands? Yeah, yeah, you know. Some of us have experienced difficulties, problems, and real challenges. But God is also telling us not to dwell on these things of the past. This nation has also experienced disappointments and failures. And sometimes we can be so frustrated with it. And sometimes we cannot stand and we therefore want to leave the country. And we think that maybe leaving the country, going to the West will give us a future and a hope. But our friends, can I say, leaving a country is never the solution. Amen. Amen. Good people must stay back. Amen. Amen. Not so good people can leave, never mind. Amen. 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 Good people must stay back. And all the good, amen, and all the good people say, Wow, wow, thank you very much. Friends, can I say, this is what I do around the world. Because even in Malaysia, Many people left the country because of Islamization. People are increasingly concerned, including Christians. And so many people have left. But I'm challenging people to stay, especially good people to stay. Not so we can leave, never mind. Amen. Amen. Good Malaysians, good Myanmaris must stay. Amen. Amen. It is like I went to Australia to preach uh, several years ago. In this city called Brisbane, right Brisbane in Australia. Brisbane, Australia. I preached there that time in the largest Baptist church in the whole of Brisbane. Brisbane, It is a church of over 2,000 people. It is a church of over 2,000 people. Halfway through my sermon, I stopped. And I said, I want to speak to Malaysian students who are here in this church. Because the church has got people from many countries around the world. Of course, most of them are Westerners, are Caucasians. But there are some Malaysian students who are there. So I said, you all Malaysian students, hear me carefully now. I want to speak to all of you. I say to these Malaysian students, please don't exchange your Malaysian passports. Malaysia for inferior Australian passports. Australia passport You know what I'm saying? Please don't exchange your good Malaysian passports for not so good Australian passports. Amen. Amen. So please don't exchange your Myanmar passports for not so good American passports. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. I believe your new president will be very happy with me here. Ah, they and all and I get the marara chano chano go tai the bo cha ma we. I believe your do and san su ji will invite me to come back again and again. Chano do and san su ji khana khana la ba lu pyo lo ma we. Amen. Because I'm encouraging good memories to stay back in Myanmar. Malo le sa chano tai kao le Myanmar myo le Myanmar nai nga ma san ni khai mo do tai do ni lo. Together to build a great Myanmar for Jesus. Ji ni Myanmar nai nga ngo po yit kao am Christo a twel ti thao mo yan twel phit tai. Amen. And this is very important. Ji ya tai go ye ji le. So I said to this people there in a church in Australia where I preached in. Chano ji ya ho le Australia tin no ma chano pyo le. I know I say that in Australia I can get away with it saying that Malaysian passports are better than Australian passports. Chano alu we ge pyo ge de Malaysia passport ha Australia passport ha pu kaung ne. The the white people they all make they they all, they all can laugh. Ah ne no ata phu de lu de ya tha ji ja. But if I say this in Singapore I'll be dead. ไอ้สิงคโปร์นายงามาเปียวมีโลชินจนตะตะขันไหนเนี่ยเดอะสิงคโปร์นี่จนงกลาตัดจามาบ่าเดอะไวท์ปีเปิลโดนไมน์อะ
ตัวตัดถั่วเราไม่ถึงออกไปในความรู้สึกของคนอื่นเราไม่ถึงออกไปในความรู้สึกของคนอื่นเราไม่ถึงออกไปในความรู้สึกของคนอื่นเราไม่
And so, for example, I understand your pastor uh, Jale. She comes from a Kachin background. And no wonder she's leading the church right now. Do you know why she is leading the church right now? Because Kachin women very strong. <laughs> no, amen. Amen. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I've been told in Kachin, women takes over, all the men stand aside. <laughs> but no, God wants to raise up a new generation of people to serve God in a wonderful manner. And so God wants to renew us and make our faith to come alive. And so this is my word for all of you this morning or this afternoon as well. Because, you see, friends, I come as a first generation Christian from Buddhist background. And, and when I came to faith in Christ 44 years ago, some of you now are giving me one kind of look. How old is this pastor, by the way? How many of you think I'm 50 years old? See your hands. Okay. How many of you think I'm more than 60 years old? See your hands. Oh, you all need, you need my prayers. All of you need my prayers. Yeah, sadly, I'm older than that. Oh, praise God, I'm older than that. I'm 64 going on to 65. So I'm 64 years young. All of you are older people compared to me. Amen. Friends, you know, if you serve God, and the more you serve God, the younger you will look. Amen. That's why your pastor Jale is so young. That, that's why your pastor Tran Tong is also so young. Amen. Amen. And friends, as we give ourselves, God will bless us in a wonderful manner. But friends, you know, many times, how many of us, we are first generation Christians, see your hands. You know, as you come from non-Christian background, you yourself came to faith in Christ. Can I see your hands? Wow, okay. How many of you, your parents or your grandparents are Christians? See your hands. Can I see your hands? Wow. Most of you. And so friends, can I say, this is a word for all of you. That sometimes when we come from second, third or fourth generation Christians, Sometimes, if we are not careful, we begin to take our faith for granted. And, and sometimes, worse still, we backslide. We want to make sure, my brothers and sisters, every generation must be better and the generation, the best is it to come. Can you agree amen for that? Amen. And so this is what God wants to do. He wants to bring many to come alive to the Lord. Many to renew the faith in Jesus Christ. So that we don't take our faith for granted. So I pray for all of you. That when you pass your faith to a younger generation. That the younger generation must do better than you all. And when younger generation pass on to another younger generation, and this even younger generation do better than the generation before and the generation before. We must make sure we pass on our faith well. So that, we, so that we can really, really make a difference in Myanmar. Can I give good amen for that? The, sec, the second thing is that many will be used by the Lord greatly. God wants you all to forge ahead. 
Because we've got a wonderful plan for every one of you. Never look down at your age. Whether we are young, we are old. God can use any one of us. Can I hear amen for that? Amen. God has been using, for example, your wonderful product from Myanmar in our pastor Sarah. God called her to come to Malaysia, thank God. And she renewed her faith wonderfully in Jesus in Malaysia. And then five years ago, or six years, six years, she started ministry in Malaysia. She led one person to Christ and began to disciple that person. And then together they reached out Okay, to win many other people to Christ. And then she became to disciple them. Today, five years later, they've been meeting in our place called Dream Center. And our, and our Myanmar congregation today is some six to seven hundred strong. So don't look at her small size. Small size people very powerful. And she, and she is further blessed by God. With great beauty some more. Amen. No amen. So she is blessed by God with tremendous gifts from God. And so here is one person greatly used by God to advance God's kingdom. And this part, I think most of you do not know. She was actually asked by the American government to resettle in America about what, four years ago? Yeah, 2011. 2000, about four years ago, she was offered by United States of America to resettle in America. She was in Malaysia with us pastoring our church. But America said, come, resettle in America. Everything provided for. She doesn't have to worry about the future. But you know what, my friends? She's a very smart person from Myanmar. She says, America, no good, Malaysia, better. Amen. But Myanmar, even better. Amen. And so that's what it is, friends. God wants to raise up a new generation, use them for God's kingdom. Because I can imagine, had she left for United States of America, God cannot use her as much as she is using her in Malaysia today. So friends, it's a choice we all must make. I get offered for jobs all over the world including America for many years now I turn it all down because I believe God made no mistake by making me a Malaysian Amen say to your neighbor God made no mistake in making you a Myanmar person Yeah, because Myanmar is a precious, wonderful country. Don't allow the devil to steal this country from you all. God has put you here to change Myanmar for Jesus. So many, many will be used by the Lord greatly. And many others will come to renew faith in Jesus Christ. So God is not only telling us to forget about the past. 
to forge a hit into the future. But God is also telling us, friends, here for every one of us to focus on the present. And so Isaiah 44 verses 4 and 5 it says like this. They will spring up like grass in a meadow, like poplar trees by flowing streams. One will say, I belong to the Lord's. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob and still another will write on his hand, the Lord's and will take the name Israel. So God is telling us to forget about the past. To forge a head into the future. But also to focus on the present. What is the present, what is the present that God wants us to focus on? God wants you and I to focus on the fact that many, many will come into his kingdom. Because many people increasingly we will say, I belong to the Lord. I've been waiting for someone to tell me the good news of Jesus. Friends, can I say, there are many hungry people here in Myanmar. Hungry, hungry not because of no food. But hungry because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I go? Amen for that. Amen. You and I must reach out to feed them with the spiritual food of heaven. Say, so see, friends, everywhere I go, I share Jesus, the gospel of Jesus, with as many people as possible. So when I check into the hotel, for example, the last few days, at the reception, I will always tell the receptionist that my name is so and so, I'm a pastor from Malaysia. And I always ask them, by the way, are you a Christian? And many, and many of this in Myanmar, and many of this in Myanmar will say, we are Bud- I'm a Buddhist. But I also say to them, God has called me here to let you know there's a Jesus who loves you. So, so I tell them to remember Jesus. But I also invite them to come to church. You see, friends, we must all reach out to share with as many people as possible. And to invite them to church. Like, for example, for some of them, I witnessed too. Here in Yangon, Yangon I said to them, Sunday afternoon, this afternoon, I'm preaching in a Hallelujah Church that meets in YWCA. So I'm, I'm, you know the senior pastor of that church, see your hand. How many of you know that name? Hallelujah. Yeah. Be, I'm told he's a very well-known singer in Myanmar. Am I right? Do you know why is he is such a good singer in Myanmar? Because he's a Christian. That's why he's such a good singer. Amen. Amen. If he's not a Christian, he will not be such a good singer. Amen. Amen. That's the power of the gospel. And so I mentioned the name to these, these people in a hotel. And many of them know their name, know his name. So I said, now you come three o'clock. Hallelujah church, you will hear me preaching there. But you also get to meet the senior pastor of the church there. And hopefully we can connect and these lives of people are touched by the power of God. Amen. We must all reach out to draw many people to faith in Christ. There are more people who want to trust in Jesus more than we realized. 
friends, everywhere I go, I share Jesus. And I always pray, Lord Jesus, lead me to someone you want me to meet. So once I was flying from Kuala Lumpur to Moscow, Russia to speak at a conference of Russian bishops and pastors. And seated next to me, who is on his way back, okay, back to England, seated next to me in the first sector from Kuala Lumpur to Dubai is a very strong, muscular man. And people, and people who are very strong, very muscular, they like to wear sleeveless t-shirts, you know. Because they want to impress you how much muscle they have. Amen. Say to your neighbor, Pastor is talking about you also. And so, he was very upset because why? He is right in the middle of economy section. I straight away, I waste no time, I start the conversation straight away. I say, hi, my name is Daniel, what is your name? And his name is Julian. And so we started talking. And you know what I found out? He was 8 to 10 times old England karate champion. And in 2013, he was world karate champion. No wonder he's all muscular like this. And I, and I look at his knuckles here and his hands. I became very careful in talking to him. Because if I upset, boom, my nose is gone. So I became very careful talking to him. I say, hi, you know what? I'm a pastor from Malaysia. And you're very special. That out of 7 billion people in this world, God will take a pastor sit next to you. Of all the people, God will take a pastor sit next to you. You are very special, very precious. Amen. 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 Yeah, because why? I told him, because you are God's answer to my prayer. Because I always pray, Lord, lead me to people you want me to meet. And, but also keep me away from people you do not want me to meet. So you all here also answer God's by prayer to all of you this morning. Amen. Amen. Because God lead me this morning to meet all of you. So I share with him. 39,000 feet above sea level. Halfway to the flight. He was in tears. Imagine. Karate, karate champion can cry one also. Karate champion le ngu nai ne no. He was in tears. Karate champion ngu wa le. I told him Julian, you know God has touched you. Then he told me Julian, me ngu phya kan tu thi ni le. And I said if you like to, I want to lead you to trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I ke lu mya min le khan chin ne so me ngu Jesus Christ ko mi mi ke tin pai chin phit le khan bo yan tu nga su taung pe chin ne. Is it okay? He, he paused for a moment. Finally, he said, Okay. So I explained to him how to trust in Jesus. And I told to pray after me sentence by sentence, aloud but not too loud. So, so he followed me in the prayer. So I told him, when you go back, I'll refer you to go to a church. And I want you to bring your whole family to church. 
He's got three children at that time. Daughter, 26 years old. Son, 21 years old. That one, a son, 19 years old. All the three children. They are all all England karate champions in the age groups. Oh, you don't fool around with someone like this. So I say take your whole he, I say take your whole family to church. He said, My goodness, I go out not as a Christian. Sorry. I go out not as a Christian. Now I go home as a Christian. And, and now you expect me to take the whole family to church. He said, he said you know what? There's going, there's going to be a huge karate fight at home. I said, never mind, I'll pray for you. But friends, what I want to say is there are more people hungry for the gospel than you realize. There are many, many people who are coming to the kingdom of God. Even here in Myanmar. People are hungry for God. People have been deceived and led astray. And we must, friends, we must be bold, courageous in sharing Jesus with as many people as possible. Can I have good amen for that? Not only friends, many ones who come into the kingdom. We have also both got the key and the power for salvation. What, what is the key we have? The key we have is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can a good amen for that? It is the good news of Jesus Christ. That's our key. Everybody needs that key, the gospel of Christ. And so we must be faithful in preaching the gospel of Christ. But we also got the power of God. What is the power of God? The Holy Spirit. God will release His Holy Spirit powerfully to touch lives. Humanly, we cannot do it. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do it. Can you a good amen for that? Amen. Can you a good amen for that? Amen. And so, friends, that's a call to the church in Myanmar. To forget the past to forge ahead into the future but to focus on the present as well to reach out to share the good news of Jesus with as many people as possible. Friends, as much as this is a call to the church in Myanmar, there is also a cost to the church of Myanmar. There is a price to pay because preaching the gospel will not be easy. How many of you, for example, when you come to faith in Christ, you have been facing challenges and difficulties or opposition from family members, from other people? Can I see your hands? How many of you, you have you, you face opposition difficulties? Wow, not so many people. But friends, can I say, in some churches I preached in, some of these people coming to faith in Christ, it's a great price and cost to them. There is this girl in my church, for example. When she came to faith in Christ, about 14, 15 years old. The father was so angry with her because the father's a medium in the temple. In Malaysia. And the father took a chopper, a big knife. And chased after her. Wanted to kill her with a chopper. 
It was great opposition from the father. It was a heavy price she had to pay. And she faced a lot of misunderstandings and a lot of challenges. But she stayed on faithfully all the way. So much so, so much so the father who is a medium in a temple. In the last few years of his life before he passed away, he became a Christian. Even a medium in a temple can become Christians. Amen. For example, in my church. I've got two former chairmen of Buddhist temples who are in my church. God can do miraculous things. Amen. Like this man, highly respected in his community. He was advisor to two Buddhist temples. And he led many people into the temple. One day, many years later, he himself came to faith in Christ. And so those who have been led by him into the temple, they were all very confused. How come you lead us all into the temple? Now you yourself leave the temple. What has happened to you? So one of them came quietly at night to see him in his house. And sat down with this wonderful Chinese gentleman. And said to him, Mr. So and so, what happened? to you. Hey, Mr. Badu Badu, you lead us in, but you also go out. Is there something wrong with you? The gentleman said, nothing wrong with me. Everything is okay with me. But it is just like this. Once upon a time, you and I, we got black and white television to watch. But now, for me, I got color television to watch. Oh. Wow, very clever man. Huh? Wonderful. God gave him wisdom. Because he did not criticize, run down this other faith. But he, said, but he says now what is even better how many of you the gospel of Jesus Christ is the best can I see your hands amen isn't it all our hands should be up if your neighbor's hand is not up if your neighbor's hand is not up just now tell your neighbor come up for prayer afterwards because you're not convinced how good is the gospel we need to pray for you how many of you again you think that gospel coming to become faith in Christ is the best thing can I see your hands can I see your hands, I see your hands? I see your hands again okay. that's better isn't it for me, likewise, when I came to faith in Christ 44 years ago, every year has become better. And the best is yet to come. Can I go amen for that? Amen. That's an amazing thing about the gospel. That's what we, that's what we must share. But sometimes it can be costly. People may not like it. Your, your relatives may even oppose you. Like this young boy, 14 years old. When he, when he came to faith in Christ in Malaysia, the father packed up his bag of his clothings and of his books. 
threw it out of the house. And told the son, get out. It was painful for him. But he stood firm. He refused to give up his faith in Christ. In spite of opposition. Today, today praise God, his father has come to faith in Christ. The father who ch- ch- the father who drove him out himself will come to faith in Christ. And today, and today this friend of mine himself become a pastor of a church also. So friends, becoming a pastor is a very good thing. The, the buffalo don't know because it's a buffalo. Amen. Amen. But you and I know better. Really? Um, That's right. why my own mother, I led to faith in Christ, so proud about me becoming a pastor. That, in fact, I gave up my engineering. I used to teach engineering at a college in Kuala Lumpur. I gave up to become a pastor. Because pastors are so good. Amen. 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 So I want to say, all of you, send your sons and daughters to become pastors. No, no, amen. But friends, you know, it may be costly for us to try to press on. There, there will be opposition even to the church in Myanmar. But friends, you and I must not give up. We must not give in. We must persevere. Can I agree amen for that? Amen So that's a call to the church in Myanmar. To forget the past. To forge ahead. To focus on the present. There will, a, there will be a cost to the church in Myanmar. There will be struggles and sometimes pains. But we must never give up or give in. Amen. 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 Finally. The commitment for the church in Myanmar. As much as there is a call and there is a cost. There is a commitment that a church in Myanmar must be willing to give themselves to. What is his commitment? Commitment to fully see Myanmar transform for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. Myanmar can be a great nation and a wonderful nation. Amen. Amen. Myanmar has produced great, wonderful people. Like your, like your wonderful Uthan. Amen. He was a great leader. Highly respected around the world. And as, you, and as you all know, he was Secretary General of the United Nations. A very prestigious position. The University of Yangon here is so very good once upon a time. Amen. Amen. That I was told that even my former Prime Minister wanted to apply to come here to study as a student. It seems he was not accepted. Because it seems he was not good enough. Oh, I thought Myanmar very high standard. Because full of clever people here in Myanmar. Malaysians cannot be accepted here in Myanmar. I hope you all accept me. Amen. Thank you very much for your kindness. I will remember to pray for this great church, FGA. Because of your kindness towards me and my wife here. This is a great church. Say to your neighbor, we belong to a great church. Amen. 
the way you say to one another it doesn't seem to be a great church say with greater gospel you belong to a great church that's wonderful they come some people even shake hands some more to believe God God is doing mighty things here but friends you know we got the power of the Holy Spirit we got a key of the gospel and it is this key and this power to change me now for Jesus amen and so we must go all out to use this key and this power the good news of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit so that people encounter God be touched by the power of God and never the same again and that's the reason why friends there's a new day and a new dawn for Myanmar you all are in for exciting times you're in for great days ahead three things are required for this new day and a new dawn firstly there is a need for faith faith in God not faith in ourselves but faith in God to believe that with God we can change this nation for Jesus for good for God and for his glory Amen. Amen. So we need firstly faith in God. Secondly, for this new day and new dawn to begin. We must have this vision. A vision of a transformed society. A vision, a vision of a great nation that God is going to raise up here in Asia in the world. But finally, there's one more thing you and I need. You and I need courage courage to dare to believe and trust God courage that will not give up courage that will stand firm people may want to leave and may want to go but no for us with courage in God and character of God we want to stay on and believe God to change this nation for Jesus. Never underestimate yourself. Don't think that only those at the top can change society and the nation for Jesus. Every one of us all the way down can change society for Jesus. Every one of us, no matter how young, how old, can change Every one of us change the nation. Amen. No matter how low you are, it does not God can use any one of us. Amen. Let me give you one example, I will close. There is this lift operator operating the elevator, the lift in New York City. New York Nangama, no Delegaro, control of Bede Ludiashi. He helps to operate this lift, this elevator in a huge office high rise. But there is another lift operator the other side, okay, of it also doing the same with this huge high rise office block. But you see, friends, most people want to come to this one, this man by the name of Fred who operates the lift. Not many people want to go to John, also the same lift operator in a huge high rise office block. You know why people want to come to Fred? Because he will take trouble to get to know the names of all these people who come to use his lift to go to the office to work. And so he will say to him, for example, Hello, Michael, good morning, how are you? Hello, Michael, Oh, hello, Jennifer, how was your day yesterday? Hello, Jennifer, 
Oh, hello, okay, hello, Lawrence. You had a good evening with your family last night. Hello, Lawrence. My name is Rong Ame. I'm a student at Cheng Gao in Zhongye. And when they take the lift to go up, to 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 no, to leave the seat door. Come on. He, he will say to every one of them. To go to the lift. Have a good day, John or Lawrence. God bless you. Today, Gao No Ne Lepi Pa Zhe John Lawrence. Good day, John or 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 Lawrence. Good day, John